Hello dear friend, uh, today's subject will be about the anatomy of the cerebral perforators in our series of applied uh, surgical neuroanatomy and uh, the perforators is a very important subject but actually you shouldn't know all the details about it but you should know what should be known I'll tell you here. So when we talk about the anatomy of cerebral perforators is a matter of great debate and variability, especially in the deep branches. Thanks God, they are a matter of variability, so we are not to study all the details, all the accurate details of the supply and the branches of each vessel because they are really variable. So you should know about the perf what you should know about perforators is that they are end arteries supplying deep cerebral structures called the central core of the brain. You know that the cerebral arteries are end arteries and the perforators are end arteries passing inside the substance of the brain. And if they are occluded or they rupture, this will affect seriously the areas I supply because we don't have collaterals. So what are the deep structures supplied by the perforators? We talk about the, when we talk about the internal capsule and subcortical areas, which is like the corona radiata. So internal capsule, subcortical areas, thalamus and hypothalamus and the basal ganglia and the brainstem. So these are the areas, deep structures of the brain supplied by these perforators. Why we are studying these perforators? Because they are the site of lacunar infarctions, which accounts for 10 to 20 percent of the strokes. Have a lacunar infarction, as we said before, in the internal capsule, you get hemiplegia, and the infarction is about five millimeters in diameter, and due to occlusion of the one perforator, so we can get hemiplegia, we can get uh, uh, death if an important perforator is occluded, we can get uh, uh, hypothalamic syndrome, we can get thalamic syndrome if you get the perforators uh, occluded and also they are the site of classic hypertensive cerebral hemorrhage. One of the famous sites of cerebral hemorrhage is at the internal capsule and due to uh, blowing, blowing up or rupture of one of the most important group of perforators which are the lateral lenticulostriate group from the middle cerebral artery as we'll see and also you meet these perforators during clipping of cerebral aneurysms uh, you can include uh, some perforators in during uh, clipping of, of the neck and this is very serious it can result in serious devastating uh, uh, consequences up to coma and death. And also in cases of cerebral coiling, when the perforator is arising from the neck or from part of the sac of the aneurysm and you want to occlude the sac, you might include the ostium of the perforator and you get also devastating results. So that's why perforators are important. Uh, the most important site or for the perforators are all the arteries of the circle of Willis and the basilar artery, caudal, middle and rostral part. So these are the site of perforators. As we said, arteries giving rise to perforators are mainly the arteries of the circle of Willis. Internal carotid artery has got perforators from the carotid bifurcation. Anterior cerebral artery has got perforators, the medial lenticulostriate group. And the middle cerebral artery has got the lateral lenticulostriate group. And also the posterior communicating artery, posterior cerebral artery, the basilar tip, anterior choroidal, medial lateral, posterior choroidal arteries. So all the arteries of the circle of Willis give perforators 
in addition to the choroidal arteries. Anterior choroidal, medial, lateral, posterior choroidal arteries. So these are the arteries giving perforators. General rule, very simple, medial perforators supply the midline and medial structures, the lateral perforators supply the lateral structures, and the posterior perforators supply the posterior structures. And as we said, most of the deep structures are the corona radiata internal capsule, thalamus, hypothalamus, and lentiform nucleus. So you can uh, put your own scheme, you can put your own uh, way of talking about the perforators, keeping these rules in mind. Course medial, supply medial, lateral, lateral, and posterior, posterior. And in this way, you can have your own, uh, I mean, uh, invention or uh, your own vision for the perforators. As we said, and as we said, there is a lot of variability in the perforators, so no one can tell you that this is wrong. Just say it with confidence. Anterior circulation perforators. First of all, as we said, the branches of the circle of Willis, the internal carotid artery. The perforators of the internal carotid artery arise from the bifurcation of the carotid. So the whole carotid carries no perforators, but the distal end, what you call the posterior genou at the carotid bifurcation, also, the choroidal segment after the origin between the origin of the anterior choroidal artery and the bifurcation of the internal carotid. And they enter the anterior perforated substance and medial temporal cortex, as we'll see. And they supply, again, as we said, the internal capsule, the corona radiata, the anterior thalamus, the hypothalamus, and the lentiform nucleus. This is a view showing the carotid artery bifurcating into the anterior cerebral and the middle cerebral. We are looking from the front and here we see the internal carotid perforators from the distal segment from the posterior genou or po of posterior bowing of the internal carotid passing into the the anterior perforated substance and here is another view we are looking from above right and left optic nerves optic chiasm, and then the optic tract and lateral to the optic tract find the anterior perforated substance and here is the olfactory nerve olfactory uh, medial and lateral olfactory stria and behind it anterior perforated substance. This is a real view from the left side. Uh, I'm looking from above or lateral, and these are the internal carotid. This is the, the uh, chiasm, optic chiasm, and this is the lamina terminalis, and here is the internal carotid artery dividing into the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery, which is continuation of the internal carotid and here you can see uh, some of the uh, internal carotid artery perforators here some of the internal carotid artery perforators and again carotid bifurcation media anterior cerebral middle cerebral and you find that the distal internal carotid artery and the choroidal segment gives perforators piercing the anterior perforated substance and supplying the deep structures as we said you notice here also a very important artery branch of the anterior cerebral as we'll see it's called hubner artery recurrent artery of hubner which is arising which is arising from the anterior cerebral the proximal A2 and passing back, reaching the anterior perforated substance and giving perforators also. So internal carotid perforators from the bifurcation and choroidal segment. This is the choroidal segment, segment of the internal carotid between the anterior choroidal artery and the bifurcation. 
anterior cerebral perforators, sometimes called the medial lenticular striate group, as we'll see, and they arise from the posterior A1 and proximal A2. Uh, Hubner's artery usually arises from proximal A2, but it can arise from the A1, and also the A1 gives posterior perforators, and they pass through the anterior perforated substance, the gyrus rectus, lamina terminalis, and the singlet gyrus. So again, Hubner passes laterally and goes to the anterior perforated substance and the gyrus rectus medial to the optic uh, of the olfactory tract. And we have the supply of the anterior old structures, anterior hypothalamus, anterior thalamus, anterior internal capsule, anterior antiform nucleus, and anterior commission. This is a view of from above, and here is anterior, here is the optic nerves, optic as anterior cerebral, above the optic nerves, and we have the recurrent artery of Hubner. Why it is called recurrent? Because at the bifurcation, the A1 comes from lateral to medial, but this branch arises from the medial part of the anterior cerebral, the distal A1, or most commonly from the proximal A2, then it goes back from medial to lateral to reach the anterior perforated substance, so that's why they call it the recurrent artery of Hubner. A very important artery you cannot sacrifice. And this is a coronal section in the brain showing the medial lenticulostriate group of the anterior cerebral artery, perforators from the A1, perforators from the anterior communicating artery, and the recurrent artery of Hubner arising from the proximal A2, distal to the anterior communicating artery, passing laterally, reaching the anterior perforated substance. So this is the medial lenticulostriate, and this is the lateral lenticular striate. Sometimes you find some references describing the lateral lenticular striate as medial, intermediate, and lateral. So they tell you the medial lenticular striate and the lateral lenticular striate are branches of the middle cerebral artery. But most of the publications agree that the medial lenticular striate are branches or perforators from the proximal A1 and A2, Hubner artery, and that the lateral lenticular striate is a global name for the perforators of the middle cerebral artery. But don't be perplexed if they tell you the medial lenticular striate of the middle cerebral, intermediate lenticular striate of the middle cerebral, or lateral lenticular striate of the middle cerebral. Another view showing that the perforators can arise from posterior surface of A1, and this is very serious when you have an aneurysm of the anterior cerebral artery junction with the anterior communicating and pointing backwards, it is the sac is passing between the perforators and occlusion of the neck can risk of including some of the perforators with it. The most difficult type of the ACOM aneurysm when it is pointing posteriorly between the perforators. Also, a very famous perforator from the proximal A2, as we said, passing from lateral to medial after the A1 passed from medial to lateral. So, medial to lateral, it is a recurrent artery. That's why it is called recurrent and it pierces the anterior perforated substance. Also, perforators arise from the anterior communicating artery. So, the anterior cerebral perforators are from the A1 segment, posterior surface, anterior communicating artery, and 
recurrent arterial volume from proximal A2. Another view, very nice view, you find here, we're looking from above, looking from the left side of the patient, and here is the anterior cerebral artery, and we have the recurrent artery of Hubner passing from medial to lateral. Here it is arising from the distal A1, not the proximal A2, distal A1 and passing posterior. The middle cerebral perforators, as we said, it is accepted to say that they are the lateral lenticulous striate group or the lenticulous striate group. They arise from the M1 segment, from the M2 segment, and from the genou, the middle cerebral artery bifurcation. It divides into superior and inferior division at the insula inside the sylvian fissure forming the M3 segment. So the M1 then in bifurcation forming the M2 and then it bifurcates in the M3 segment as we'll see now and also they pass through the anterior perforated substance which is laterally situated and also they supply the lentiform nucleus internal capsule head of the caudate and external capsule being very lateral again this picture but this time we are talking about the lateral lenticulous trade group which are the perforators of the m1 segment and this is m1 forming m2 and this is the bifurcation and it can arise from the m1 segment most commonly but sometimes arises from the M2 and the bifurcation. So again, this is the middle cerebral artery and the branches from the M1 and going to pierce anterior perforated substance, supplying the caudate, the internal capsule, the lentiform nucleus and the thalamus. Another view, M1, then it is forming the genou and the M2. You find most of the perforators arising from the M1 segment. However, some arise from the M2 segment, some perforators, and from the bifurcation. Posterior communicating perforators, they arise from the superior and lateral surface of the PCOM and they pass through the middle perforated substance. So we have the anterior perforated substance, posterior perforated substance and middle perforated substance. It's not a common name, but if somebody asks about it, this is the part of the interpeduncular fossa pierced by the branches of the PCOM and also they supply the hypothalamus, optic tract, thalamus, posterior limb of the internal capsule. It's not important to know every single supply, but you should know that this is supplying the medial part, which includes the hypothalamus, the optic tract, optic as the thalamus, and the internal capsule. And here is the carotid bifurcation again. And we are looking from below, so you can see the circle of Willis. Of course, you don't see here the anterior cerebral, because we are looking from below. They are above the chiasm. So the internal carotid artery divides into the anterior cerebral and the middle cerebral. And then the posterior communicating artery joins the internal carotid artery with the posterior cerebral artery and these are the perforators of the posterior communicating artery and this perforated substance is called the middle perforated substance here is the anterior perforated substance here is the middle perforated substance and at the basilar tip you have the posterior perforated substance also 
as we said, the branches of the circle of Willis, and we have the anterior colloidal perforators. The, all, all the perforators are from the posterior surface of the vessel. And they pass through the parahippocampal gyrus, and they supply optic tract, internal capsule, hypothalamus, thalamus, lentiform. And this is a view, internal carotid artery. And we have here optic tract, and we have here the anterior choroidal artery winding around the lateral midbrain together with the optic tract and having perforators supplying part of the internal capsule, thalamus and lentiform nucleus. Another view, internal carotid before it bifurcates gives the posterior communicating looking from below and the anterior choroid. This is the anterior perforated substance. This is the posterior perforated substance and this is the middle perforated substance. Anterior choroidal artery passing around the lateral brain stem together with the optic tract as you remember passing through the choroidal point entering the temporal horn of the lateral ventricle supplying the choroid plexus also perforators from the anterior communicating artery so we talked about anterior cerebral middle cerebral perforator internal carotid anterior cerebral middle cerebral posterior communicating anterior choroidal and we talk about the anterior communicating as we said uh, it is a small artery communicating the two anterior cerebral in the midline and perforators arise from the posterior surface and what is in the midline is the lamina terminalis and septum pellucidum. Posterior circulation perforators, as we said, they are from the basilar and the posterior cerebral branches of the circle of Willis. So, anterior perforated middle perforated substance, posterior perforated substance. And we start by the basilar artery. It arises from all the length of the basilar artery, caudal, middle, and rostral. And what does it supply? If it is in front of the pons, it supplies the pons. If it is in front of, above and in front of the medulla, it supplies the anterior medulla and at the midbrain supply the cerebral peduncles. So basilar artery perforators supply the anterior structures of the brain stem. This is the structure, if you remember, two vertebral arteries at the ponto medullary junction, then perforators going to the pons from the caudal, middle and rostral parts of the basilar this is a lateral view showing the perforators arising from the whole length of the basilar artery. This is a stent or catheter inside the basilar. Also, posterior circulation includes the posterior cerebral perforators. They are two branches with names. Proximally, thalamoperforating arteries, distally, thalamogeniculate arteries, proximally arising from the P1. What is the P1? From the basilar bifurcation to the origin of the oculomotor nerve, and it supplies the medial midbrain subthalamus, hypothalamus, tunnel capsule, and branches arising from the P2, the thalamogeniculate arteries, and P3, supply the lateral part of the brain stem uh, like the tectum posteriorly metathalamus pulvinar posterior thalamus posterior limb of the internal capsule they go posteriorly so if we say that this is the basilar artery this is the posterior cerebral and the posterior cerebral there are branches arising from the proximal posterior cerebral or the p1 what we call, what, what do we call them? 
Yes, it's thalamo perforator perforating arteries, and from the P2 thalamo geniculate arteries. So here is perforators from the basilar, perforators from the P1, what we call uh, the thalamo posterior thalamic perforators, and from the P2 thalamo geniculate arteries. This is our thalamo perforating arteries. This is the thalamo geniculate arteries and sometimes the proximal P3 even. Know that between P1 to the oculomotor and then from the oculomotor to around the cerebral peduncle is uh, or the origin of, sorry, the basal bifurcation to the PCOM. We have the P1 segment. This tells the PCOM we have the P2 segment around the cerebral peduncle, and these are the anterior thalamic thalamo perforators, and here's the thalamo geniculate arteries. Thank you very much. I know that this subject is a bit perplexing, shouldn't know every part of it by heart, and uh, uh, maybe some people say, Why are you uh, giving us such a lecture? because there are certain names you should know. You should know what is the perforated substance. You should know what is the uh, Charcot's artery, what is Hubner's artery, what is the thalamoperforating arteries, what is the thalamogeniculate artery, what is the medial and lateral lenticulostriate arteries, and what is the importance of the perforators. But of course, you shouldn't uh, study or shouldn't say everything by heart about the supply of each of the perforators uh, and as I told you thanks God there is a lot of variability so you shouldn't study by heart each artery giving what we said that there are five main deep structures corona radiata internal capsule uh, the thalamus and the hypothalamus and the lentiform nucleus added to it is the brain stem these are the sites supplied by the perforators and you can put your touch in these uh, structures and nobody can tell you that this is not true because the variability of these perforators and their course uh, uh, make it a barrier uh, that we don't have a fixed uh, real anatomy about the number or the name or the site of the perforators. It's a global nomenclature as we said and uh, I had to give this subject uh, to be complete for sake of complicity in uh, uh, the anatomy and the applied neuroanatomy but uh, I promise you that uh, uh, the other next subjects will be much more interesting again thank you for your attention and I hope we meet soon in another uh, part of the applied and surgical neuroanatomy.